Well, I'm sitting here with Melinda Dwight, the National Director of Alpha for Australia. And Melinda, it's great to have you with us. So good to be here. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Now, for people who maybe don't know what Alpha is, in a couple of sentences, could you explain Alpha? I'd be sad if they didn't know that Alpha exists, that they've seen the logo. We've had 30 million people globally that do it. Basically, Alpha is an opportunity to explore faith. So you come, you have some food, you watch a talk and you chat about it. And every question is valid. Um, and we don't answer any of the questions. Because I've been a follower of Jesus for a long time and I have unanswered questions. Maybe even you do. Perhaps. <laughs> so it's a safe place to talk about them. And so we help people to belong before they believe, before they learn how to behave as a Christian. Now, 30 million yeah, attendees a is yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. Why do you think Alpha has been so successful worldwide? Yeah, great. Well, it's the Holy Spirit, probably. Um, but the reason is it's the gospel we all agree on. So, you know, about 15% of parishes around a nation will, Catholic parishes will run Alpha. So when you say to someone, would you like to come to Alpha? They'll say, oh, no, I'm Catholic. Oh, Catholics love Alpha. Anglicans love Alpha. You know, oh, we love it if Muslims or Hindus or atheists come because that gives great conversation. So I think it's the inclusion that people love being a part of. And who doesn't love food? And who doesn't love a good dinner party? It's a win. It's a win. Now, some people might imagine Alpha is a, it's a series of lectures <laughs> about here's the key doctrines of Christianity. Um, but from what you're saying, it's not really a series of lectures. Can you describe the tone or the feel of Alpha? Because um, I think if, if many people in church understood the feel and the tone of it, they would be more inclined to invite a friend. Sure. You think about the best dinner party you've ever been to. That's Alpha. So you come along, you have some fun, you get to know people. You don't leave all your Christian speak behind. We're not interested. You can talk about things like the weather and the rugby and cricket, the things that really matter, especially the cricket. And, you know, we have a conversation, we get to know people. There's an interactive video that goes for 28 minutes, which has got all sorts of things. It's fun, it's professional. We spent a couple of million pounds on it. So there is content. But then the discussion is basically anyone can ask any question they want. And we ask it with respect and with care, and we're actually building community, which is great. Now, can you tell us about the, I guess, the trajectory of topics that you go on in an Alpha course? It can run from eight weeks to 10 to 12 weeks, I understand. Yeah, sure. um, what topics do you cover and why do they go in the order that they go in? Yeah, that's such a good question. We are really seeking to help people know the gospel. Uh, however great the speaker in a church is, the gospel presentation is probably about five minutes. And so, I don't know, I couldn't buy a car on that. So I need to kick the tyres, I need to find out more, I need to test drive it. That's what we're doing with the gospel. Who is Jesus? Why did he die? What is prayer? 70% of Australians, when surveyed, say they pray. So what we're doing is talking about prayer and opening them up to praying to God in Jesus' name. Um, then the next one's on the Bible. And we don't actually open the Bible to that week. And then everybody gets the same Bible and we say, hey, page 302. And so we don't assume anything that would embarrass our guest. Mm -hmm. We go at the speed of our slowest guest. So if you're really super spiritual and want to get them saved the first week and have a lot of theological content, don't come, right? We need you storming heaven privately and praying. Mm -hmm. Right? So we're really just taking people on that journey of exploring faith. And then when we built trust and when we built community and we built confidence, we have a Holy Spirit weekend. That was going to be my next question because I've heard you share about that. Um, tell me about that Holy Spirit weekend or session or moment. Um, tell, me, tell us about the simplicity of it and just some of what you've experienced. Yeah, great. Um, you know, this for me is what is the heart of being Pentecostal in an inclusive way. Um, and so at that weekend or at that time or at that evening, whatever it is, you'll talk about the fact that Jesus knocks on the door of our heart. Mm -hmm. So, and there's only a handle on one end. So you can either invite him in. And so you will say to people in your small group where you've built trust and relationship and they know that you respect their questions, you'll say, so where is Jesus? And wait for an answer. And you might say, actually, I've already invited him to my heart. That's fantastic. You know, or he's knocking on the door of my heart. That's great. Are you, would you like to invite him in? Mm -hmm. And you might say, no, okay, no problems. When you are, let me know. And you might say, yes. And then we pray and invite Jesus into your heart. And then we do the same thing with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, your questions change when you've encountered the power of the Holy Spirit. We live with the presence of God. Most people don't. Right. So when you start to say to them, we're gonna pray, come Holy Spirit, 
And we just got to open our hands and pray, come Holy Spirit. It's better than get me if you have to. Yes. And so you just pray, come Holy Spirit. And he does. He does. And people get filled with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes people are filled with love and joy. Sometimes people speak in a language they've never learned. They go on that journey of continually praying, come Holy Spirit. And even if they don't come to faith, they never again question the same way wow. because they've experienced the presence and power of God. Wow. Now, we were chatting before the cameras turned on about um, how Alpha has been delivered during the pandemic and yeah. the use of Zoom, the redemption of Zoom. Um, can you share with us some of what the Alpha team have learned about using Zoom and online to yeah. deliver Alpha? Yeah, great. I guess the first learning is that I was wrong. So we trialed it a couple of years online. I go, you know what? People need me to put my hand on them and pray for them. Like they need that connection. Now we're not going to use it. And then, of course, within a week, particularly, you know, being in lockdown situations, we had to do it. Mm -hmm. So we went to Zoom and I was surprised. The openness of people in their own home. They have control. People who have never, ever entered a church building will join in online because they feel safe. They might turn their video off or their audio off at the beginning to just kind of suss us out. But interestingly enough, they start to open up. The big surprise to me was that come Holy Spirit moment. Right. When I just said, we're going to open our hands and we're going to pray, come Holy Spirit. And we don't do the Pentecostal spit and push because you can't online. <laughs> you know? um, and so we just do that and we wait. And we wait for the Holy Spirit to come. And sometimes he'll give us pictures for people um, and sometimes he'll give us words. And most people are either crying or experiencing the presence and power of God in their own home, which has been amazing. So then you keep on going on the journey and then you go, hey, you know, the good news is we can actually meet in person. Right. You know, let's all have breakfast and then go to church together and we'll all sit together. Yes. So someone online all of a sudden is coming along to church with 10 people they know. Wow. And then they're going for coffee afterwards and it's just a great experience. It's not, we need community, but community can be built online and then come personal. Yes. One of the things I've observed about Alpha in our experience running it at Calvary is that when a person does come to the point of making a decision, they're almost pre-discipled. Yeah. Like they've done the discipleship journey and they're making a very informed decision about Jesus, which is what Jesus encouraged us yeah. to do. Sit down, count the cost, yeah. then come yeah. and follow me. Has that been your experience yeah. worldwide? Um, Jesus said over 70 times, come follow me. So it was only once he said, be born again, and that was to Nicodemus. So the concept of following Jesus is biblical. And you follow him. When was it the disciples had that moment of revelation? Well, we could debate that. But the truth is that was discipleship, hanging out with Jesus, asking questions, discussing that. Um, so, yeah, they, they, when they make a decision, it's a considered decision, knowing who Jesus is, why he died, what his prayer, what that's going to be. And then the following week after that Holy Spirit encounter, we talk about healing. You know, and how God can use us. Right. And so the following week, you've got someone who's been a Christian five or six days praying for you, for healing wow. and praying for miracles. Let's be honest, they get them. Yes. You know what I mean? I, you don't know want you know me. I know. Right you don't want me praying for you. You want this person, yes. you know. Um, and so, yeah, they're absolutely discipled. So it's, I'm sure you'll do this at Calvary. Everybody that um, comes along to Alpha is invited either as part of Alpha or the next steps to, to water baptism. Right. And it's fantastic. Yes. When you baptise these people together and you say to them, invite your friends, invite your family. Yeah. And of course, at that baptism, they share their story or they do something. Um, and then there's an invite to the next Alpha. Yes. So each one builds on the other mm -hmm. because the people who've come to faith still have friends that aren't Christians. Yes. And they're not really nice like you and me. Come if you want to. They say, you have to come. I'm taking you. You're sitting with me. They're like, you know, people have given up smoking. Yeah. You know, they're militant or about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, CrossFit people. Let's not start. Yeah. yeah. No. We exactly. don't need to talk about them. They'll talk about themselves. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, it's true. Now, for people in Calvary Church who they love Jesus, they're following Jesus, I guess there's two ways that they could be involved. And, and I would love every person in Calvary to say at some point in 2022, at least for one of the course modules or alpha modules, uh, I'm going to be involved. Um, First would be volunteering, second would be inviting people. Can you talk about the experience of a, an alpha facilitator or volunteer? Because yeah. to me, nothing reinvigorates your faith like being around people, exploring faith or new to faith. Yeah. Is there common feedback you get from alpha facilitators? Yeah, um, the first feedback is we really like pastors, but they're generally rubbish at it. 
because they've spent all these years on theology and when someone asks a question, they want to answer it. So no to you. Um, now you can come along if you can learn to be quiet, but we're looking for people that are great at hosting a dinner party. Mm -hmm. You know, that are great at saying, wow, that's a great question. What does everybody else think? Mm -hmm. When everybody, everything in them wants to answer the question. Mm -hmm. So that's who we're looking for, people who just love gathering people. And here's the thing, if you don't have all the answers, you're the person we want, right? Yes. The people who are interested in going on the journey are great at it. Um, and you can bring your friends along. So help and volunteers, can I just go back a step? The first thing we need everyone to do is pray. Mm. This is a supernatural making disciples time. Mm. Do not underestimate the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, prayer for who to invite, prayer for when to invite them, prayer for that. This Alpha is kind of one of the most encouraging, dreadful things you'll ever do. Because people come along and they're exploring faith and then they don't turn up yes. one week. You know, it's kind of like invitation to church. You hang out in the foyer saying, they're going to come, they're going to come. Oh, they didn't come. But we talk about the fact that you're moving them more along the journey of faith. Yes. You know, and that's what's going to happen. So hosts and volunteers, we love you. Perhaps you're really good at cooking. We love people who cook. Um, if your job is intercession and we need intercessors, then we need you to intercede. Take the names of all the people doing Alpha. Spend that um, time that Alpha's on praying. Pray over the hosts and helpers. This is the spearhead of evangelistic impact. Mm -hmm. And we need prayer. We need volunteers and then everyone needs to invite. Talk to me about invitation because yeah. sometimes we, we get scared to invite because we don't want to get embarrassed because I invite my neighbour once and they come along and they have a bad experience while I still live next to them for the next <laughs> 10 years and that's now it's awkward. Yeah. Well, Can you talk to us about why it's a non-awkward environment? Right. Um, the first thing is probably we get scared of invitation because we fear rejection. Mm -hmm. You know, if I ask you, what if you say no? Well, my responsibility is the invitation. The Holy Spirit's job is the acceptance. Mm -hmm. He knows where you are. Mm -hmm. So if I invite, that's a win for me. You know, that's, wow. If we believe that it takes 12 connections at least for someone to come to faith, mm -hmm. the invitation is moving them around the journey. Right. Right? So you have to probably invite someone at least 12 times yes. before they come. Right. So just get used to it. So the invitation is really... The first thing I would suggest is you write down people you think might come, mm -hmm. people you know will never come, and people who might. You're not even really sure of their name. They're the random neighbour that you wave at or the barista or whatever. Yep. And you start praying for all of those nine people. Just start praying for them. You know, let's get God working here. Mm. And then you invite them. And that might be a text. That might be going around and talking to them. It might be an email. It might be a social media post. Invite broadly. Mm -hmm. The invite is the win. Right. Hey, we want to thank you for taking some time to... Can I just practice Alpha. how you invite? So you just yes. say, would you like to come to Alpha? That's simple. And then shut up. <laughs> easy. Because <laughs> God's already at work. So that's, you know, it's not complicated. Don't make it complicated. Make it easy. Excellent. Excellent. Hey, thank you for taking some time to explain it. And would you pray for us now? Because there'll be people from Calvary watching this who have had an inclination. Yeah, I'm interested. Would you just pray that God would use us and that we would see many people start to follow Jesus this year. What a privilege. I'd love to. Father, we thank you for your eternal plan of salvation and redemption. Lord Jesus, thank you for your grace that was freely given to us and freely given to everyone in the communities where we live and function. And Holy Spirit, we pray that we will catch your wind. You said as we go and make disciples that you would be with us. Would you be with us? Would you be with us as we ask, should we be helpers or hosts? Would you be with us as every one of us thinks how we can invite? Would you be with us as we host gatherings with people that, that are on a journey but aren't necessarily the same of us? Lord, we just believe across our church in so many campuses that there will be the greatest time of invitation we've ever seen and that some of those people will accept and go on Alpha and that their lives forever will be changed. And for many of them, their eternities will also be transformed. So Holy Spirit, we pray help. I don't know if you guys have done this, but you want to just take your phone out? Lord, we pray for everyone on our phone. We pray for everyone on our social media feed. We pray for all of our contacts that we will lift up Jesus and perhaps invite them to Alpha. We just pray for them now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Melinda. Thank you. Thank you.